what prophecy is all about. This is really uh, the reason for prophecy. One of the major reasons that we study it. We know it will happen. So we study it. But it's God being God all by himself. When he speaks it, then he has to carry it out. Then he has to bring it into being. He said, the former things have come to pass. Meaning, the former things that I spoke, the former things that I spoke came to pass. Now I'm speaking new things, and they're going to come to pass. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I just want to stop and praise the Lord. We had a great time Friday. Uh, my father and myself, uh, Pastor Jim Simula, came from Brooklyn Tabernacle Amen. and spent uh, the morning with us. We had a good time. We had lunch with him. We had a great time. Amen. And uh, he went to, in case you didn't know it, he played basketball for University of Rhode Island. And he was the uh, captain of the team. They won a couple of big games in the National Invitationals. You know, in March they have what they call National Invitationals. They went way up the ladder, won a, won a lot of games, and uh, played very well for the school. But anyway, he's uh, the pastor of Brooklyn Tap, and uh, we had a great time. And one of the things that he was telling us is how God had worked in his life, uh, how God had spoken to him, and then how God had brought brought all these things to pass. This is what prophecy is. This is the way prophecy works. God speaks to you and gives you a promise and then he brings it to pass. But you have to be faithful and walk the promise out. You've got to be faithful. It isn't that God does everything you do nothing. No. That doesn't work that way. You have to be obedient to the promise. And uh, he was talking about how he was believing. He had heard uh, my father preach about faith and money and money and faith. And uh, all of a sudden, they were in a building program and they needed six million dollars. Now that's I'm talking 15 years ago. Now this is like 12 million today. And uh, they didn't have it. And he went on a missions trip to Argentina. And when he came back, the first day he was back in the office. Uh, he went and sat down at his desk and he had stacks of letters for him to open, personal, personal letters, and he was opening the letters. And the second letter he opened, uh, this man said, I heard a song that your wife did with the choir and it did something in my life, it changed my life, and I'm giving you a check for one million dollars. I mean the church, I'm giving the church a check for one million dollars. And then, he goes, and then he ran out, of course, he ran screaming out into the office. My God, look at this! And he had, he had, had prayed, prayed a prayer in Argentina. And he said, God, I can't make it. I'm going to get crushed. And God said, I've got your back. Come on now. God's got your back. God's got your back. Amen. So, then he continued. He gave that to the financial director in his uh, office there. And they were all shouting praises. And then he decided to open a few more letters. And he opened this one. And this one was from a woman who said the same thing. You know, the music has ministered to me. Yeah. And I've had a change in my life. God has changed my life. Amen. And I'm giving you a church, a check for $5 million. $5 million. And uh, she said, I'm a recluse. Don't bother to talk to me because I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> but she said, I owe God this money because he did a miracle for me. Uh, Come on, put your hands up. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Come on, shut up. Come on. This guy needs to get his finger around here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, he wrote out a little poverty around here. Poverty reigns. There's a spirit of poverty around here. That's right. Six million dollars, that's exactly what he needed. Because he had taken a six million dollar loan out with a group of people, uh -huh. and they said, "You got to add your six. He said, "God's told me He's going to give it to me." They said, "How?" He said, "I don't know how." Now that's faith. You, you know God's going to do it, but you don't know how He's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. So before the morning was over, he had six million dollars, 
And he had to have it. Now that sixth that they had long into the sixth that he had raised was 12. That was just to get him into the building. That was just to get him into the building. Then he had another 25 million to believe for to fix the building. That's right. And he said, the banks were with us, they loaned us the money, and uh, the senator from New York State put the screw on the banks and they loaned them the money. That's what happened. But anyway, God knows, God knows everybody. Even crooked people, straight people, God uses them all. Say hallelujah. So, then, he was, he, they were paying $450,000 a month in mortgages. $450,000 a month. He said, we ever made any pay? God made us make every pay. We didn't, we didn't miss one pay. He said, but after a while, you feel the burden of that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you have a hiccup, you're in trouble. If anything doesn't work, you're in trouble. And he said, I began to do missions trips, travel around the world, and I began to think, God, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be great if uh, I didn't have to pay this half a million dollars a month mortgage for the church, and we could give that money away? He said, we can do what we can help everybody. Yes. He said, wouldn't that be great? Then, he was struggling along. All of a sudden, God gave him faith. The Spirit of God spoke to him, a prophetic word, and said, we're going to pay this down. This is going to get paid off. But before he paid that mortgage off, a piece of property came up across the street from the theater building. They're in, a, they're in the third largest theater building in the United States of America. The first one is Radio City Music Hall. I'm going to know that one. All right? And there's one more and then there's theirs. And uh, this office building came up, 100,000 square feet of space, which they needed for us, but they needed for Sunday school homes. They needed for activities. They needed for you. They needed for everything. They bought that, and then he was really under the gun. And he was talking about how he had gone and, and purchased the uh, he had purchased the building, and he didn't know how he was going to pay for it. He went down. Now this is downtown Brooklyn. People here don't know that, but it was really it was down. It was the pits. It was the pits. Today it's through the sky. It's through the sky. They're selling million dollar condominiums for one bedroom. Million dollars for one bedroom. So I said to him, how do blue collar people live? He said, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just telling them what they're doing. So, all of a sudden, somebody came into his office another day and said, I'm a builder and I have financing and uh, we want to talk to you about the buildings that you have. We want to buy the air rights. We want to buy the air rights to your buildings. He said, I never heard of air rights. How did I know what that was? I don't know that you could buy, you could go up another 40 stories, where you are, go 40 more stories, and build on top of what you have. So, all of a sudden, they said, we'll buy your air rights. He said, that was $56 million. $56 million. Paid off every debt, paid off every mortgage, and now we give money like crazy overseas. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Why do you tell the story? I don't know. I just felt impressed. I have to share this. Because i got to encourage people to believe. You want to you do something for God, God will do it. But you've got to be willing to take a step. That's right. You've got to take a step. There's a lot of people that struggle with their mortgage payments. All you gotta do is tell them, look, you help me pay this house off, I'll give this money overseas, I'll give it to the church, I'll give it to you. You watch how fast that thing will get paid off. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. It'll get paid Amen. off. So then he said, on the way, now, they came to me the other day, my business manager, and said uh, they want to appraise the property. He said, the total properties now are worth $126 million. 
It's all God. Come on, give the Lord a hand. It's all God. Yeah. And the first million also came by a miracle. The first million dollars came by a miracle. Somebody gave it to him, and he went to the uh, people that were selling the building, uh, the theater that he wanted to buy, and he said, let's go, let's buy it. And they said, he said to them, I'll buy it for uh, six and a half million. They wanted eight and a half. They said, six and a half. He said, okay, we'll do the deal. They shook hands. They didn't know he had no financing, no money. All he had is the first million. They said, Reverend, we believe you. He said, Lord, you heard what they said. <laughs> we believe that you're able. Yes. God is able. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Then, that very week, another group called a Christian group, a group that everybody would know, we have a Christian group, and said, we want to help you. We want to we loan you five million. Well, that's the five and a half million that he needed to buy the building. When God is in it, I'll tell you something, when God is in it, he'll do it. But you gotta hold up your end of the bar. Yes, Too many people live in poverty because they don't want to give to God. Yes, you want to stay there? Stay there. Stay right there. But if you want to move in God, you've got to be willing to take a few steps and trust God. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants to break the poverty cycle. Yes, right. God does not want you struggling. For every nickel. No, Just like when he was down in Argentina a second time, he said, God, I'm sort of tired of paying this $400,000 a month. Let's get past this so I can give this away. Yeah. Come on, God, do Put your hands up. God will do it. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you need a breakthrough in your finances? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you to stand with me right now. Come on. God's going to ask you to do something. But you're going to take a step of faith and say, Lord, I want to see a breakthrough so that I can do more for the kingdom. I can do more for the kingdom. God does not want his people in fear over finances. Because I want to tell you, the economy is going to shake around you. And you're going to hear crazy things going on. Okay? How many of you know that the state of Rhode Island is having a hard time paying the income tax back? Yes. Yeah. How, many you, how many of you are aware of it? How many of you have not received your income tax back yet? Put your hands up. That's proof of what I'm talking about. That's right. Sounds funny, doesn't it? But you just wait for the United States government to pay you. This is the beginning. See, these politicians will never tell you the truth. Don't you believe what you hear? Don't let me tell you the truth. I went to do my taxes this week, and the man said to me, the state of Rhode Island is not sending back the money to the people. I said, what are you talking about? First of all, I'm not getting any money. I owe them money. So I feel better about that. I'd rather, I'd rather owe them money than them owe me money. That's right. He said, they're not, they're not sending the checks back. I said, from how long? He said, from people that filed to get a check back since January. Yes. I said, this is unheard of. He said, it is unheard of. You know what? I didn't like that. I said, I see something bad here. You just wait till the federal government can't pay you back. You're going to have to be in business and in partnership with God. God's going to have to be your partner. Hallelujah. Now, this whole thing is unplanned. What I'm saying is unplanned. It's the Holy Ghost. Right. I just know that I felt an inspiration. Right. But when I went, as I said, to do my taxes, this Tuesday, yes. and my tax preparer said to me, the state of Rhode Island is not paying the money back. Oh. I said, okay. I didn't say this to him. I said, get ready for a ride. There's a lot of people trusting in the government. God wants you to get rid of that and start trusting in God. Put your hands up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got a big God. Father, you are a big God. You said you want cattle on a thousand hills. Cattle on a thousand hills is all yours. Meaning everything on every hill is yours. You own it all. Amen. And you don't have to prove how you're going to do it. We just have to believe that you will. Amen. We don't know how. 
but we know you will. We thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for taking our people to a new level of faith and trust in God. They're going to trust God. They're going to believe. They're going to break out of poverty. They're not going to be wondering about where the next 50 bucks is coming from. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord, you're going to make us into hilarious givers. A hilarious gift. We thank you, Lord, we're going to do way more than just tithe. Amen. Hallelujah. Tithe is only 10%. People are going to go way beyond that. Way beyond that. 20, 30, 40 percent. And that means you're going to have to have money to do that. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Don't let us stumble over the small things. Don't let us stumble over the big things. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of blessing. You are the God of more than enough. More than enough. We thank you, Lord, as we begin to see the government shake. We thank you that you're going to take care of us. We're your people. We're going to sow into your kingdom. We know it doesn't matter what's going on. We're still going to sow. See, the devil wants to get you frightened so that you don't sow. That you don't give. And if you get frightened to the point where you don't give, I can't afford to. You can't afford not to. That's right. You can't afford not to give. That's right. Yes. So don't go to God and ask Him to help you when you don't give. Don't do it. That's right. It's a two-way street here. This is something else the government doesn't teach you. It's two ways. You give to God, He gives to you. Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We walk in prosperity. We walk in blessing. You are the God of more than enough. More than enough. Not just enough. More than enough. More than enough. All the time. More than enough. Hallelujah. Shabbat Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. The God of more than enough. Hallelujah. The God of prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I don't mean just financial prosperity. I mean prosperous in all your situations, in everything in life. Your relationships, your family, on the job, where you're working, you're prosperous everywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hit this plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is so important, this kingdom. We were in New York pastoring and uh, we were uh, building a church and God said to me, I want you to give everything you have. And my father-in-law had given us an inheritance. We had this land that's there's lots that he'd given us, and my brother had built a house for me because we were in the ministry and he was, he was trying to, they were trying to give us a home so we'd have something. My brother had built a house for me, my father had given us, my father-in-law gave me the land and we sold it, and we had this money to buy a two-family house, and God said, give everything you have. Hmm. And I, it, was a, it, was, it wasn't easy. And I spoke to Gene and I said, God has spoken to me to give everything we have. Yes. To give all of it. And we've sold We're going to buy a two-family house now for retirement. And God said, I want, I want it all. Oh. And I said that to my wife, and you've got to thank God for my wife. She said, if God said it, we're going to do it. Yes. If yes. we said it, we'll do it. Yes. So we gave everything. Amen. The smartest financial move I ever made. Amen. Immediately. Because the Bible said, the Bible says, give and it will be given to you. That's right. Give and it will be given to you. You start with you giving. Then the giving comes. Smartest thing I ever did. Yes. The biggest thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Immediately. Hallelujah. And immediately. Real estate. I saw how to make real estate, do real estate. I bought the places in Connecticut. I had no money. I went and, and bought them without any money. And the money came to me, and the, the banks loaned me the money. I sold, I bought these three, three houses, three buildings in Connecticut. And I had a 
power from a wealthy, wealthy man in New York City, tremendous wealthy man. This was his summer home. And we had a summer home, and we had a tower, and we had a house to rent out, and, uh, uh, and, and two houses, uh, three properties. We sold the first one. I sold it. Right. I sold the first one, and I had the money to pay back the loans, and I had the money to buy the other ones, and the rentals paid them off, and I had not one penny in it. And I, when I sold it, for some years later, I sold that property, and some years later, I gave a hundred and some thousand dollars to the church out of it. Yes. I gave it all, all back away again. Praise God. The smartest thing I ever did. Yes. I immediately real estate came to me. Immediately I got my yeah. money down. Because God said, what God says he does, yes. give, and it shall be given to you. Hallelujah. Yes. Folks, if you don't have anything, the smartest thing you can do is invest with God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Folks, it was, that was the turning point in my life. That's right. We've been blessed ever since. Amen. 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 Because when I turned loose, God stepped in. Praise Amen. God. And when I sold that place in Connecticut, I gave the largest cash offering that church ever got. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It works. Yes. The book is true. Yes. It's true. Yes. Give and it shall be given. This place we're in is an example of it. It was built with faith. People gave when it. it's why we're in this building. That's right. That's right. Was, Zion was a giving yeah. place. Yeah. Zion was a giving church, a yeah. giving people. Yeah. And you'll be blessed. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're praying and preaching at the same time. We've got a tag team going. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So then he said, he said, I gave all the money away that his wife had made in the royalties. Now how many of you ever heard of Brooklyn Tap? Come on. All the music she brought was about three million dollars in royalties. So they gave it all away. God, you need it, you got it. When you get to the point where you say, God, you need it, you have it, he'll take care of you. Yes, he will. But you gotta step up to it. Yeah. God is true. Amen. And his word is true. Amen. Amen. It'll work for you. That's right. And he's no favorites. It'll Thank work for anybody that trusts God. Amen. God is alive today and true. And he wants to bless you. Yes. Get him into your life. Get him into your life. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, God wants to break the curse of fear and of poverty. Fear and poverty. Fear of it. Fear of release. Which brings the poverty. The fear creates the situation where poverty comes. You may not think of because there's always going to be somebody worse off than you. But if you have a, uh, if there's a fear issue on giving, you're right next door to poverty. Okay? And the devil knows that. We've got to break that. That's got to go. And God will step you up to the plate and say, swing when I tell you to swing and give when I tell you to give. He will. But every time you'll be blessed. Every time. And he was talking about that. That's really essentially what the whole talk was about for two hours. Just giving testimony to what God had done in his life. Amen. There were times when God said, get going. After a while, when you get freed up, God can have whatever you want to have. But that's really what the covenant is all about. Yes. The covenant yes. that we make with God is everything that he has, he has is ours. And everything that we have is his. A lot of people want it one way. Everything he has is mine, but he doesn't get any of mine. No. You've got to go way past that. Because the true covenant is equal in terms of what we will give. Now, God's got everything. He's got it all. He's waiting to see what your heart's at. That's what he's waiting to do. So we're going to pray against poverty today. Put your hands up. Hallelujah. And the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Lord, we curse the spirit of fear. If I give, I won't have. 
No, it's a lie out of the pit. If you give, you will have. Yeah. Give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give to you a bosom. Amen. Shall men give back to you. And we curse the lies of the enemy. We curse the lies of the enemy. We curse the lies of the enemy. Of the enemy. And we thank you, Lord, that they're going to begin to release. And as they release, God will release to them. Thank you, Jesus. And they're going to see a big God. Not a small God, a big God. Most of us have God in a box and he won't get out until we let him out. It's the truth. So Lord, we thank you that God, you're getting out of the box, we're opening up and we're going to believe in big things. Much bigger than us. Hallelujah. Much bigger than who we are. Much bigger than where we are. You're going to take care of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you. We thank you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, thank you. We release your people today with faith. Yes. With faith. With the prophetic word. Amen. Yes, Lord. With the rainbow word. This is the spoken word. Yes. Hallelujah. God does not want you going around worrying about five bucks. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He wants you to be able to give, to release, to be hilarious givers, to be joyful givers, and then it will come back. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. you can't ask God to give you your needs if you can't sow. It doesn't work. Now, there are people that live right on the edge all the time. I don't want to live right on the edge. I want to be 100% in God. I want to see His hand in our life. I want to see his miracles. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we speak a blessing on your people today. A blessing on your people. A blessing on your people. Hallelujah. Just take somebody's hand. Come on. We're going to bless them in Jesus' name. A blessing on your people. A blessing on your people. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. A blessing. That's it. It's somebody's hand. What are we doing? We're coming into agreement here. We're agreeing. There's a spiritual principle here. We're agreeing. Hallelujah. We're agreeing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of us will never be able to work hard enough to earn the money that we need. That we need. You'll never be able to work hard enough. If you don't have God, you won't work. We need a miracle. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So we thank you, Lord. We're your people. And we're blessed. And we're giving back into the kingdom. We're sowing into your kingdom. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord. You're making us into a blessing. We curse every bit of fear and every lie that Satan will want to put into our heads today. Wants to put a lie in your head. Come on, you can't do this. You can't. You can do anything God tells you. Say thank you, Jesus. And now, Lord, we thank you for this week. We're going to demonstrate who you are to this people. This week, we're going to demonstrate big things. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey,